All right, welcome back, everybody. We're going to get back to where we were in our Let's Play of Broken Sword. So, we know we've got a murder uh, suspect loose somewhere, and I, I hope I'm not timed here. I don't know if I have to move quickly or if it's going to give me enough time. A Louis XIV table with an antique cloth. Imelda had taste, but hey, with a husband that rich, taste is easy. I reckoned that cloth might just turn out to be useful. Even my fingernail wouldn't fit into such a small hole. But I know what would. Aha! Nico, you are just so damn good at this stuff. Instead of comforting Imelda, I was ransacking her flat. Why? Because there was something going on here, and I had to get answers before the cops arrived. And hey, she'd been rude to me, so she had it coming. Mm -hmm. A key. Maybe a safe key. Hmm. Okay. Didn't see a safe. Probably someone uh, hidden somewhere, maybe behind a painting. But I guess I would talk to the wife. She was deep in conversation. She totally ignored me. There was no one I needed to phone. Not until I had solved this case. Besides, Imelda was using it. For a second I thought she was just going to reach over and hit the hang up button. <laughs> that would have been pretty funny. She was deep in... Okay. Alright, so I can't bother her at the moment. Let's keep looking around. It was a tube of acrylic paint. French ultramarine. Just the color I was after for my bathroom. I'm sorry, I have to go. Someone is... Young lady, what are you doing? Oh, this paint. <laughs> it's my favorite color. For God's sake, keep the damn stuff. For God's sake. All right, you talk. Excuse me, madame. Yes? I guess these are questions I can ask or people I can ask about. These are items I'm guessing I can ask about. The last thing she needed to talk about was paint. <laughs> Says you. I am so sorry for your loss, madame. No, you're not. You're a journalist. Journalists don't feel sorry. Not true. We shall see. How did your husband know my father? I have no idea. You didn't know him? Thierry Coulard? Pierre knew a lot of people I didn't know, most of them women. Why did your husband send for me? What did he want to discuss? I have no idea. His business was his business. He never told you anything? No, and frankly I preferred it that way. Why would a mime want to kill your husband? Pierre had plenty of enemies. Half the husbands in Paris for a start. This is quite a scoop for you. I suppose you're already inventing the headlines. Just because I am a journalist. Don't patronize me. You're all cut from the same cloth. Do you have any moral sense at all? Yes. That's why I do this job. You do it to see your name in print. As if. My editor gets the byline, I just do the work. Well, don't expect my sympathy. The police will be here soon, madame. Is there anybody you would like me to contact? Family? Friends? No. I have no family. Pierre and I were... He was all I had, really. Not much, was it? The dutiful wife. That was my role. He never talked, never let me in. I know one thing, madame. What? If you want to find out who killed your husband, then you let me do the job, not the police. Why? How do I know I can trust you? Your husband invited me here today because he needed me. I think he knew somebody wanted to kill him, and he knew I could help. I doubt it was your database he was after. You're wrong. I was on to his killers already. I am sure of it. Please, you owe it to him. I don't know. All I need is a few more minutes to look around before the police come. You really do have a moral sense, don't you? I trust so few people. And perhaps Pierre really did think that you could help. 
Of course it wouldn't have stopped him seducing you, too. Here, take this. It's the key to the drawing room next to the library at the end of the hall. It was Pierre's room. I rarely went in there. I couldn't. I was too scared of what I might find. Thank you. I promise you won't regret this. I'm digging the music. I don't know if this was in the original, but uh, I really like it. Very atmospheric. Um, hold on just a sec. I'm going to edit this out later. I'm going to uh, get out of the video for just a second so I can stop that annoying click that you're hearing. I had my Internet Explorer open and it was doing something. Who knows? Imelda had talent, but I certainly wasn't going to tell her that. Why does she keep saying had? Is she going to die too? This is being told in past voice, so maybe that means she's going to kick it too. Ooh. Madame Cachon, I... please call me Imelda. We hardly need the formalities now, do we? So? Her husband took secret boat trips. Did she really need to see the ticket? Thank you. You have your own reason for taking the cloth. Please keep it. I needed to open the drawing room door before giving Imelda back the key. Imelda might not have been so cool with me poking around if I'd shown her the key I'd found. Would you like to see my favourite hair clip? What a ridiculous question. <laughs> of course not. Another time, I guess. Okay, so obviously this shows people things rather than asking about them. <laughs> Did Monsieur Cochon say nothing to you about my father? No, I'm sorry, he never mentioned him. All right, then. That's probably about all. I was sure that there was more to find. I just had to keep looking. I thought of leaving, but was sure there was more to find. Oh, okay. I didn't know that was the exit. <laughs> a medieval pageant. Original, no doubt. The tapestry must have cost a fortune. Something else I discovered by accident a few minutes ago before I started recording. There's a little hit system. Now, I'm not sure, I doubt, this was in the previous version of the game, but hey, in case I get hopelessly stuck, I might not have to resort to a walkthrough. I can just kind of click there. Just wanted to give you guys the full experience of the game. I think this is the door that the key is to. A fine baroque door. It would look great in my apartment. The door was locked. Now we were getting somewhere. Indeed we are, Nico. I didn't need the lights on. It was light enough already. The painting showed the cachons together, in love. As the poet said, the past is a different country. Or did I read that in a fortune cookie? There was the very faintest of clicks. This wasn't the time for me to lie on the sofa doing my Marie Antoinette impression. Though it is very popular at parties, especially with gay guys. Don't ask me why. <laughs> oh, I won't. <laughs> As expected, the desk was yet another priceless antique. Yawn. The blotter and intray had clearly been placed with mathematical precision. I didn't need a sheet of blotting paper. Not while it was blank. My heart skipped a beat. It was a carved elephant. But not just any carved elephant. It had been made by my father. I knew for certain because in my apartment I had its exact twin, carved into a box he had made. So cochon. 
had known my father, they really must have been friends. I decided to take the carved elephant. It clearly meant nothing to Imelda. I didn't want to take the tray, but I knew that I could use it. It was the beautiful elephant my father had carved. A key. Maybe a safe key. <clears throat> Locked. Not surprising, really. I think I could see what the game was wanting me to do over there, but I'm going to explore a little bit first. It didn't work, but I guess it would have been surprising if it had. Not really. <laughs> I know I wouldn't want to have tons and tons of keys for my own house. Aha, I knew it. Behind the I picture was a safe. Somewhere. In the safe was some kind of artifact. There were strange symbols on its surface. It looked like the printer's blocks I'd made at art school. If there was one thing I'd learned about symbols, they are always important. But these symbols scratched into stone were impossible to read. I needed to find a way of printing them. At least the stone was round. But what could I use for ink? And what could I print on? Sure, I was stealing, but I knew Imelda didn't know about the artifact, and Carchon was past caring. Well, about she justifies everything. <laughs> yeah, I knew it was stealing. Alright, so I think we can employ with the ladder. See if I can do this. The artifact? was like an old printer's block, covered in symbols. I'd spread blue paint over the bottom of the tray. It was ruined. I was a very bad, bad girl, but also quite a clever one. I rolled the artifact in the paint until it was completely coated. I didn't need a sheet of blotting paper. Not while it was blank. An antique tray with paint spread all over it. Not a lot I could do with that. Genius! From being the jacket. roller and the pen worked just as I planned, but what did it say? It was some kind of coded message. It read, Subjudice. I may not have learned a lot as a journalist, but that was a term I knew well. It means a legal case that is before the courts. Below it was a sequence of letters that made no sense. I suddenly realized there was a connection between the boat ticket and the coded message. The boat ticket was stamped Bateau de la Conciergerie. The Conciergerie on the Ile de la Cité by the river housed the ancient law courts. Uh -huh. So, subjudice could in this case mean literally under the law courts, below the Conciergerie. I was pretty sure I'd found all I could here. And besides, all this opulence was making me pine for my regular life of poverty. This was a huge story. It was also one heck of a puzzle with a lot of pieces missing. But I was going to crack it. And if I could just remember the name of that fancy prize you get for being an ace journalist, I was definitely going to win it this time. Pulitzer, right? <laughs> 